Okay, folks, so today we're taking a look at and setting up the Sofa Baton X1S Smart Remote. Now, Sofa Baton did send this to me for the purposes of this video, but this is a fantastic premium all-in-one remote controller that is compatible with up to half a million different devices. And that's because it includes a special hub. I'm going to show you the setup in a moment so that you can connect over Bluetooth, depending on your device, or if it doesn't support Bluetooth, then just through standard infrared. It will give you total customization over the remote control buttons, although in my experience, the default options tend to work just fine, which require little setup. And the control itself also boasts up to 45 days of use of a single charge. Getting into the actual box then, we start off with our instruction manual for the remote. We have the remote itself, which is one of two devices that are gonna be in the box. The other is the hub. And then in here, we have everything else. So we have the hub, power adapter, a couple of USB-C cables, and a couple of infrared receiver cables. So on the hub, we have the two infrared ports here. We have the USB-C power port, and we have the pairing button. And there we have everything included in the box. Okay, it comes with everything you need, but before you actually start connecting your entertainment devices, we do need to get the hub set up within the Sofa Baton app. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get the X1S connected right into the app here, which is a free app, the Sofa Baton app. I've got it downloaded, set up my free account, and I'm going to select the X series because that's what we're setting up here. And we're going to set up a new hub. So yes, I can confirm that the hub is plugged in right down there. It's got power, so let's tap next. And then we're gonna hold the button on the back down for three seconds until the LED here, which you can see is a solid blue at the minute, begins blinking. So let's hold that down. The blue LED is now blinking. So let's tap the checkbox here and then next. And yep, it's detected the hub. So let's go ahead and select that. And then we'll just tap okay. And yay, the hub's now connected. And it looks like there is a firmware update since this is my first time setting this up. So let's go ahead and update that now. Okay, update successful. So an important note is here for those of you using a Roku device, which I am not, but there's just a couple of settings you'll need to change to make sure that your Roku device is going to be compatible with the X1S. So what I'm gonna do now is get this shut down, get it connected up to a TV, and we'll see what we're working with. Okay, we're all good to go at this point. Let's get the hub plugged in, start adding our devices. Okay, so I've got the hub here. I've got the Sofa Baton remote right here. I've got a number of devices I need to set up to it, the TV. I've got an NVIDIA uh, Shield, and I've also got a Blu-ray player here. And it's saying audio only. It's currently on TV mode, but I don't want to get copyright on this video. So rather than showing you actual TV channels, it's just going through the radio channels right now. So I've got the app right here. So I'm going to select Bluetooth and that's because this TV is actually an Android TV. So I'm going to select Android TV here and then it's just gonna take a minute to download what it needs for the Android TV connection. And using my actual TV remote, I'm going to go ahead and get the pairing mode active for Android TV here. And this will just take a moment or two and the app says it's been completed. And now on the controller, you can see that we have the TCL TV device that I've just set up. If I go ahead and select that with the trackball button here, then it's highlighted green for us. I can go ahead now and change channel. Okay, simple as that. Or if I know what channel I want to type in, then I can do so in the remote control just by selecting the telly, and then I can start typing in the numbers here. And of course, I can adjust my volume as well, although right now I've got the radio muted, again, for copyright reasons. And for the most part, it just worked, just by going through that Bluetooth pairing. Right, so the TV, very easy to add there to the remote controller through the hub. And a couple of buttons aren't working as I would like them to, so we're gonna go and fix those on an individual basis. All of this is a one-time setup, so once you're done, you are done, but it is worth doing just to get things right for you. So in my case, while I can use the control wheel here, the up and down buttons on that to change channel, and that works absolutely fine, I would like to be able to use these arrows right here, the up and down arrows. But as you can see at the moment, they are just not doing anything, they're not connected. But we can fix that again fairly easily. So once more, I've got the app open. And if I just select the device I want to repair some buttons for, and by the way, you can actually control the devices through the app directly without even having to use the remote controller. How awesome is that? But as you can see, the up and down buttons on the right hand side are greyed out because they're not connected. So what I'm going to do here is select edit at the very top corner. And then I'm going to select assign commands for remote keys. And if I scroll down the list here, 
I can see that we have those two buttons right there, but they are not currently configured. So let's configure them very quickly. We'll select the up arrow button. And the thing I want to assign to this is the up arrow two. Now, how do I know that it's up arrow two? Well, quite easy. If you hit the trigger button next to it, then it will actually show you on your device what that button is going to do. In this case, it's going to move the channels. So we'll just select up arrow there, wait for that to update. And now I've just selected it on the app. I don't actually need to do anything else. It will automatically update to the remote control. So now when I use these buttons, I can go ahead and start scrolling through the channels using the two buttons that I feel more comfortable with. And of course, you can do that with all of the buttons on the remote controller, including the buttons down the bottom. If you want to set those up to any shortcuts, you can. Now, sometimes your original remote control may have a button that isn't present on the actual X1S remote, and so you'll have to add it manually. Let me show you how. So this is the original remote controller for the TV. And as you can see, I can click that button there and then choose what source I want to watch from. For example, the TV, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, etc. The actual uh, sofa baton controller hasn't set that up automatically, so I'm going to have to add it as a button. And I want to add it over to the hamburger button just to the right of the home button here. So I'm going to start by tapping edit here, and then we're going to select add or repair commands in the app. And I'm going to just call this source change. So then I know what it is. We'll tap next and I'm going to learn by IR or infrared. So what we need to do is take the original controller for our device. Make sure we know what button we're trying to assign. In my case, the source change button. And then with the infrared at the top of the controller, point it down about three to five inches on top of the hub and then just push that button. OK, and once you've done that, the app should detect it. And yet right down the bottom there, it's added source change. So we could hit trigger now to detect that it is working. Yes, it is. I just tap trigger on the phone app and it brought it up on the TV. So that's perfect. So the only thing that's left for us to do now is to add it to an actual key on the controller. So let's go ahead and assign commands for remote keys once more. And if we just select source change on the button that I want to change. And so now back with the sofa bat on X1S controller, if we hit that hamburger menu button, there we go. And to be honest with you, I've now got the controller set up perfectly for my first device. And yeah, it took about five, 10 minutes, but that's all done now. It's how I want it. And I won't need to fiddle about with those settings again. So I've also added my Nvidia Shield TV, which is another Android device I could connect over Bluetooth. But I do want to now add our third unit, which is the Sony Blu-ray unit, which doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities. So on the X1S controller, you can see I have my TV and Nvidia Shield set up. The Shield was just the same process as the TV because that is also an Android TV model. So I could set that up over Bluetooth. But now we do need to go ahead and set up the Sony Blu-ray over infrared. So once again in the app, I'm going to tap the plus button. Only this time I'm going to select the infrared option. All we need to do is know the name or the model of our actual device. So we'll select Sony here for the brand and then we'll paste in the model number which I know. We'll select that and then it's just going to show us the buttons here. We'll select next. Of course, we can edit those buttons just as we could with the other devices if we need to. Let's select complete. And then it's just going to download the codes that are needed. And then it will sync the controller to the hub afterwards. So just take a minute or two. And there we go. I've now got my Blu-ray player on the app. So all three devices are set up. And I'll just wait for it to finish syncing on the controller here. And there we have it. All three devices nicely set up. So if we head down to the one we've just connected, which is the Sony Blu-ray, and then we can go ahead and start controlling our Blu-ray player, as you can see here, with the X1S. And if I want to go back to any of the other devices, then I just need to scroll up to TCL TV at the top because that's what I set the source changer to. And with that connected, I can hit that menu, hamburger icon, and then change to, for example, TV. Or if I wanted to change to the Nvidia Shield, I could do that. And there we have it then, folks. The setup is complete. The remote control is working as we would like it to. And it is so convenient. It does feel like a premium product. Yes, there's a little bit of setup involved. But as I mentioned, that's a one-time thing. Once you've got through it you're good to go then and all you need to do is charge the remote control every 45 days or so but folks hopefully this video has been helpful to you thank you for stopping by checking it out i'll catch you next time